In tough times, a good home-cooked meal can offer a lot of comfort. But with most people trying to visit the grocery store as little as possible and fresh produce dwindling in the fridge, good ingredients can be hard to come by. That's why renowned chef Lydia Bastianich has been posting simple meals she's calling pantry recipes, made up of just a handful of ingredients you probably already have on the shelf. And she even did an in-home demonstration on PBS's Foods Facebook Live. A basic sauce like that could really grow into whatever you have. You look in there, I says, what kind of vegetable? Let me throw in some broccoli. Best known for her long-running PBS show, Lydia's Kitchen. She's also an Emmy Award winner, a six-time James Beard winner, and the author of more than a dozen books and owner of several restaurants, as well as part owner of Italy. Lydia Bastianich joins me now. Welcome, Lydia. Buongiorno, Emily. Buongiorno, Buongiorno everybody. So after getting over talking about you know, the coronavirus and the horrible numbers and how many people are sick and then worrying about the economy, the number one, the third item on everybody's list is food. And, and as you point out, they're, they're worried about what they have. They don't want to go to the grocery. So help us out here. What's some simple things we can do with ingredients you think we have, but maybe we don't? Absolutely. OK, so vegetables, you know, green vegetables, everybody loves, but they're always hard to maintain. Frozen vegetables are perfectly fine. Frozen peas, frozen flowers, frozen, frozen broccolis, they're perfectly fine. The next best thing is dried legumes, beans. Dried beans, split peas. Yesterday I made three pounds of split, split pea soup, oh, a big love it. container. You know, I have my mother with me. She lives. Then my daughter is down the block. Then I feed some older people around too. And I make the drops. I tell them I'm coming. So split pea, it is for them too. But beans, dry beans, lentils, these are great things to have in your cupboard. You know, and then to make it. All you have to do with, with beans, with dry beans, is to soak them from the night before. They reconstitute themselves. And then you make your soup. Now, dry beans is a base you can put onions, you can put car carrots, celery, and any other things that you have, any vegetables that you have left over, any vegetable that from the freezer. Root vegetables are especially good, you know, like sweet potatoes. Squash also keeps well. So soups uh, are a great, great things to do. And in the soup, if you have a sausage or if mm. you have a pork <laughs> or something, and that gives you the protein. Yep. So you have the protein and the mixture of the legumes and the vegetables, and you have a full meal. And what's great about soups is that you can, you should make a big pot because oh, yeah. one pound of beans will make about four quarts of a gallon of soup for you. You know, nice amount of potatoes in there and so on. And then you can eat mm -hmm. it, but then you can also freeze it in quart plastic bottles. Sounds Mark on it what you what you have, and so you have your stash in the freezer. We should point out that some of these beans are hard to come by because they've shut down all those uh, you know serve yourself counters and Whole Foods and everything. So, so you have to get the packaged ones. Um, yeah, but you know you can get it. You can get it online. Yeah, I sure. get it online. You know you can get online. The, the, all the dry legumes could be gotten online. And you know what's a great legume? Dry legume is dried fava beans. Mm. You dried fava, fava beans. When you cook fava beans, you put them, something like the split peas. They will disintegrate and make the soup dense and velvety and delicious. Mm. And they could be had on, on the Internet as well. Uh, and, and so then, of course, for me, for us Italians, it's always about dry pasta. Yeah, pasta, pasta and rice. I think people don't realize how many things you can do. They, they go to the standard thing with pasta, but you can make a million different things with pasta. A zillion. You can use <laughs> pasta and put it in the soup too. You know, yep. we have a pasta fagioli with the beans, a little, uh, you know, a little pasta. Or you can even break uh, a spaghetti into it and cook it together. You can cook rice in soup. I love rice. But yeah. Rice. You can make certainly a risotto. You can make, uh, 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 you know, in all of the soups. You can boil rice and serve it next to a vegetable, you know, with the protein. So rice is endless. Us Italians use a lot of rice. <laughs> and of course, the pasta, the dry pasta. Now, if you're uh, into it and you want to make fresh pasta, you want to have oh. some fun. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people are doing that. I you know, know, I know. <laughs> that gives you satisfaction. Well, it gives you something to do, that's for sure. So I heard, that, um, I heard that yeast is really hard to find. So many people have been baking their own bread that I, I don't know if you could get that online, too. But apparently all the stores are out of yeast. 
Yes, yes, yes. I know there's difficult. They, they're telling me, my, my family's telling me, but I have a stash. I'm sure yeah. you do. <laughs> I have a stash. And, and so, uh, and of course, the dry pastas. Yeah. Garlic and oil, a little parsley and a little pepperoncino. You got yourself a great meal. Fried egg, yeah. and then you <laughs> exactly, and then you build from then up. You have garlic and oil. You can throw some vegetables in there, or you can throw some bacon in there, or you can crumple some sausages in there with vegetables. And you use you put the pasta to cook. You use the pasta water to make the sauce. You ladle the pasta water from the pasta boiling, cooking mm. into the uh, garlic and oil and the vegetables, and you let it perk away and it makes a delicious soup. So anything that you have, you know, like a little, if you have a little bit, you can stretch it making pasta, you can stretch it a long way. If you have bacon, but you only have maybe two, three uh, uh, strips of bacon, cut it up with a little bit of onions and a little bit of stock, and you got yourself a carbonara. You put an egg yolk in there, and you got yourself a, a great carbonara. Some people are complaining that they're eating things that they wouldn't normally eat because they're seeking comfort food. And, and people are worried about gaining weight. I mean, I'm sure you've seen all the memes and jokes, as we all have about this. But yes. what, what do you tell people at this time about that? Don't worry or, you know? No, I wouldn't worry. You know, food is uh, the one, it's a common denom denominator to all of us, no matter where you are on this earth, we all eat. And it is next, you know, next to being alive, food keeps us alive. So we all revert to that comfort that gives us security that we're going to continue mm -hmm. to, to live. And we enjoy food. You make it enjoyable as well. So look, food is, is um, a way of communicating, of showing emotion, of showing you care, of sharing love. Uh, food is a medium, uh, you know, like no other. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why it's so sad about the restaurants. And you're, you, you, own, you have a hand in many restaurants, Italy, one of my pl favorite places to go to pick stuff up. I mean, what's the anxiety level like at, at, at those institutions? It's, now? it's awful. It's awful because, you know, we have different restaurants. You have so many people that you have to let go. These are people that have families, people that we've known for 20, 30 years, mind you, some of them. And it is devastating that I can do nothing for them, you know. Besides, you know, when we closed, we, we sort of shared some of the food and whatever, but there's not much else that I can do. So it is, it is devastating. And what will be? What is to come yet? That, you know, we're all anticipating, you know, this distance keeping between how are the restaurants going to manage? Is it all going to be takeout? Of course, it's not going to be takeout. People enjoy going out and, and all that. So we have to revisit that whole. But you know what? I think uh, that uh, maybe we shouldn't get over stressed about it because there's not much we can do. We have to follow the science. We have to see where it takes us and what is best for us as humanity. And then we each will fit ourselves into that, respecting those rules. But in the meantime, you know, uh, uh, I remember my, my, my grandmother, she had all the... I, for uh, all the animals and she saved the beans for the next winter she made the, the oh. flour she had and you know she made the prosciutto we had pigs and she made the prosciutto the bacon and she saved all of this the food the precious food pigs in the summer when they were ripe we would dry them in the sun and in the winter time we would use them to bake so let's get back to that that kind of uh, appreciation of food respecting food because you know at, at one point more than 40% of what was bought in the refrigerators by, oh, by Americans that. goes wasted. Yes. Maybe this is well, a good time. I am working my way through my freezer, I want you to know, and I'm, I'm not even halfway. So thank you so I'm much, clean, Lydia. Clean it up. I'm Get working on it. <laughs> find something to do with all of it. It is simple. Okay. Lydia Bestianich, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. All the best. Stay happy and healthy and with a good meal in front of you. <laughs> thanks.